be great to just take that motor off that Tesla and then put it on your DIY car? Remember a couple weeks ago, I showed you EV West project, the EM3, the, the, the electric M3 that they had, and Jay Leno was there at the shop, and he was doing some kind of shoot with it, and all we did was just a burnout. Well, then I mentioned that in a few weeks time, it would I would be able to show it to you on the track, right? Unfortunately, that event is happening today, and we're not there uh for whatever reasons right but a couple days ago michael had the opportunity to i guess meet up and hook up with these uh professional drifters hey, we're in anaheim uh there's some kind of uh, motorsports event we're here with the ev west guys let's go check out their brand new m3 these guys that drift cars three of these cars you know and they do this choreographed thing where they go around obstacles and all this other stuff right these are like these are like professional drivers they do pretty amazing stuff it's a pretty interesting sport right for those people who like motorsports and stuff so i was lucky enough to be able to show up and you know witness these guys taking an electric car out and try to do their thing uh, on an electric car for the first time. Okay, for those of you who don't know, the electric uh, E36 from EV West, that's a car they built back in the day in 2012 to compete at the Pike Speed, right? They competed and they actually set a record on the street legal class that stood for a few years right up until the, the time that a Tesla stripped down tesla came along and then beat the record right so that car has now been redone and the two massive dc motors the warp 11s that it had in the front with the power glide transmission on the back have been removed and have been replaced by a single model s motor in the back uh axle right and so now they've lightened that car by 1100 pounds or something right so much smaller battery and the powertrain is a lot smaller and lighter but it's got uh, just this, about the same amount of torque and power output, right? And so, so now that the car has been recently finished, now it's time to go and test it. And so this is one of the first times that you'll get to see this car being put through its paces. Oh 
by the way, the conversations at the end of each one of these runs were pretty amazing. These guys are blown away. They're, you know, the power is there. There's a lot of good stuff they had to say about the, the, the power that they saw. The car was, was too powerful at the beginning, so Michael had to turn it down to 50%, so about 200, 200 kilowatts, 250 kilowatts, something like that which is uh for according to what the driver said it felt like a solid 400 horsepower and so they were asking for very specific things like uh be able to adjust the power the, the power delivery right the bandwidth so they want to be able to ramp up and ramp down so more so that it mimics more like the traditional internal combustion engines right so they are used to having you know pressing on the gas and having to wait for the powertrain to catch up and so not having that here you know it's kind of weird for them and they're asking for that right and so right now it's so early in the game that we don't know if we're actually going to give them that so they can like drive more like like the traditional way or or they're just going to have to change their their driving style to match that of the like you know immediate power to the wheels that ev cars and that EV systems can provide, right? So, so according to them, this is a very feasible powertrain for drifters. And now the only thing is to just, you know, fine tuning of the controls to be able to allow them to have the control that these guys are used to. And it's gonna be the same thing for uh, driving, you know, road courses, or, you know, in this case, like Pikes Peak, if uh, Michael wants to go back and try to recapture that record, he's gonna have to fine tune this system to be able to allow for the, you know the little things that will make a difference you know like a split second difference between beating a record or coming in second <laughs> This is the motor on the left, right here. And, uh, God, it's not even fucking warm. Um, yeah, so that's the motor, and then that's the motor controller. So okay. it's an AC motor, but this takes in, you just see two leads, because it's positive and negative, you know, 400 volt, and it, it inverts it in there. So it's actually a whole DC system until it hits the motor controller. That turns it into uh, right, just 8, like 8,000 hertz to give it induction, and then that does uh, into the fields over here in the motor. Just like a standard electronic speed controller on a brushless motor or something. On right? a brushless motor, yeah. right, yeah. But they're sensor. Uh, most, most, uh, when you, you know, most people, they think of this stuff as, um, RC stuff, but that's all permanent magnet. So it still has three phases, right. but it's actually just using DC because all you need is DC to attract a magnet. What this is, is this is actual induction. So it uses, um, you know, what's the thing like, you know, those chargers that are like wireless or like wireless chargers, right? right, right. right? So that's induction. And what they do is they just uh, oscillate the DC at like 8,000 Hertz. Uh -huh. uh, and, and then you can actually get energy to travel through air. Right. right. Um, and so that's essentially what they're doing because there's an air gap between the fields and the rotating state, or excuse me, the rotor. So, uh, so that's why they need induction to jump that gap. And uh, they can manufacture the motor uh, cheaper without putting permanent magnets in it. And uh, when you put permanent magnets in it, if you overheat the motor, the magnets will actually lose magnetism. So you'll technically lose horsepower over time with a permanent magnet setup. Interesting, so this is, you this almost no permanent magnet even? No, it's all induction. So you can get these motherfuckers like, Looking fucking hot. Like in my, uh, I have a, my daily driver's a truck, but I raced it in Puma Seca once just yeah. to see what the fuck it would do. And yeah. I mean, I called the actual motor company, the owner and I are kind of friends. I'm like, dude, I'm seeing like fucking 160 C's. He's like, ah, oh, fuck, just go for it. He just didn't even fucking care, man. Yeah. It's the coating and the, and the windings, right? That's the only thing yeah, that could break down. Yeah, I mean, down. if it was a gas or what, 100 C's fucking boiling, right? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had it up to 120 and I was freaking out too. I'm like, Did you oh, really? Yeah. And it's fine, right? I, just, you can smell it. You can smell you it, can yeah, smell but it. that's probably just the paint. <laughs> yeah, that, that was yeah. <laughs> Along with my, my electric Samba, I took both of my electric skateboards that I'm working on currently and these guys also were having fun riding around on these things. As you know, these are current projects that I'm working on and I have 
videos on them. So with that, all that's left to say is see you in the next video. Bye.